Right. This basic lab, which we did in the previous session, we are going to continue the same lab. We will check the cost first. According to R1, the cost to reach the Lubeck of Router 10 should be, oh, let's check from Router 3. So according to R3, it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 40 plus the Lubeck 150. Let's go verify that. Router 3. Show IP route 10.10.10.10. Uh, what is the cost? <laughs> 50. And what is the administrative distance of ISIS? 115. So it is in between EIGRP, sorry, it is in between OSPF and RIP. You see, the standard protocols, the industry standard protocol, not the Cisco standard, industry standard protocol, we have three only. RIP, OSPF, ISS. RIP is 120 in Cisco, RIP is 120 in Cisco, OSPF is 110 in Cisco, ISS is 115. See, this number is not same for every vendor. For Cisco, this is what these numbers are. ISIS is in between OSPF and RIP, 115. And what type it is? From where it is coming? It is coming from other area, no? Hmm. It's type 2. Level 2 adjacency. It learned through level 2 adjacency. Now, if you check the same route in Router 1, Let's go and check the cost. What do you expect as a cost from in from row to one? What do you expect the cost from row to one? Are you there? Yeah. What do you expect as a cost from row to one to the loop at ten dot ten dot ten dot ten? No, no. What is the cost you are expecting from router one? If you check to reach 10, 10, 10, 10, what, what is the cost? How 20? From router three, what is the cost? You see, per link it is 10. So this is 10. This is 10, 10, 10, and loopback, even though it's a virtual link, still it is considered as a link, uh, 10 is the cost. So when I was checking from router 3, it was 50. From router 3, if it is 50, from router 1, what will be the cost was my question. Will it be 60 or 70? It will be 60. Why you know? This is one LAN. One LAN. One local area network. Is this a routing device? Is there any routing happening here? No. So, even though you have two physical wire, this belong to same LAN, same network. See, this belong to same network. Likewise, this belong to same network. Do you agree? All these three belong to same network. So it is not per physical wire, it's a, it's a layer three circuit. Layer three circuit, 10, 10, 10 is between this end to this end, okay? So it is going to be 60, let's go and verify. You see, it is not 70, it is 60. So layer 2 is not considered. Only the routing hops. Layer 3 hops. And again, it's only L2. Okay. Now let us go back and uh, 
go in this flow. Now, if you change the metric style to wide, will there be any difference? No difference. Let me show you. Wide metric will be used only if you are doing some uh, uh, segment routing or uh, VXLAN, uh, when you have base protocol as ISS and, uh, and MPLS traffic engineering with ISS, only there you will need metric style wide. You see here, I'm going to say um, router. Um, first, let me check to do show IP protocol. Did I give any process ID? I have not given any process ID, just simply ISS. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do we see in this command show IP protocol? We have maximum path redistribution, fine. And now, um, show ISS, show ISS. Uh, uh, okay, I would like to show you one command, show IP, ISIS database. You will see two topology. One is L, L1. Do you see level one? You see this is level one. And you also see level two, two separate databases. And if you see in level one, you see only those three routers that are within that same area. Is it right? Router 1, Router 2, Router 3, three routers. In this, who is this, you know? The one which is repeated twice. Router 3 is a this router. What is this? Instead of DR, we used to call this what? This. The one with the bigger MAC address, no? That becomes the DR. MAC address, here MAC address. You remember I told you to use MAC address. Okay. Now, I was about to show you something. What was that? Just thinking. You were about to see something. Okay, metric. Show run section router ISS. If you see the current condition, we have not mentioned anything about the metric style. Okay, I'm going to say router ISS metric style wide okay this is how we change the metric bits from 6 bit to 24 bit for the interface and 10 bit to 32 bit for the total path cost yeah <coughs> so narrow narrow metric is only 6 and 10 Wide metric is 24 and 30. 6 is interface, 10 is total path metric. 6 is only for that interface. If it is wide metric, 24 is for the interface, not six, just 6 bit, 24 bit. So you can, you can give a very big metric number. And uh, you can have many number of hops if you are using wide metric, 32 bit, so you can have a very big topology. See, with the 10 bits, you cannot have too big. Two to the power of 10 is how much? That many links only you can have. Each link is 10. Two to the power of 10, whatever the number comes. It's more than uh, 7,000, I believe, not 7,000, whatever. So if you want a big topology, then you need to migrate to wide metric. Not only that, if you are doing, uh, if you're doing traffic engineering with RSVP, uh, using ISIS, then you need to make it as well. Okay, I made it as wide. You will not see any big difference, you see, in the output. See, I, I changed it as wide metric. But still, if you go to the routing table and check, you still see the same. Hold on. You 
is it down? Show IP route. I lost the route actually. Why, you know? You should configure on every router. Ah, that is the problem. I should, I should, I should have mentioned it. It is not mentioned here. If you are changing on one router as wide, all the routers should be changed as wide metric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply copy this and paste it on all the routers to save time. I'll say router ISIS. And then metric style wide. We need to paste this on router two. We'll go in order. Two, three, four. So if we are changing, <coughs> have to change it on all the router, which we should not forget. So let's go to router one again to check the route. Ah, now all the routes have come. And you can see here, L1 means same area. L2 are coming from other. And you can see here, 70 as the metric to reach 999, that's our focus. Our focus is 10, 10, 10, 60, no? 60, 60. So there is no change, even after changing wide metric, don't expect a big number. The big number is not a matter. How many bits that are going to be involved? See, more number of bits, more hops you can have. Yeah. And big, big metrics you can set. Um, interface router ISIS ISIS uh, metric metric you see because I said wide metric I get this big number. Before configuring wide metric, if you come here, you will not see this big number. See, I can set this big number as metric now. Let's go to router 10 and see now 11111. I should see a big number. That's much. Sure, I can route 1 dot uh, 60. Give some time for the convergence. I'll also set it on router 3 permit. No, no, I should set it on loop back. Or to run here. I should set this metric where I run it is. Um, that is best one. Instead of just setting on the physical interface, then I need to do it on both sides. Interface loop back 0. Now let's go to router 10. Look at this. We've got a big metric. But if it is not wide, you cannot do this. You cannot get this big number. Let me remove this. And now if I go back to router 10, I should see back to 60. Yeah. And now Router ISIS, no metric style wide. 
I removed it. Now I lose the neighbor. That is one thing. I lose the neighbor. You know the reason. So it's gone. It's gone now. Show IP route. You don't have root. Uh, let us try to configure metric. Interface Ethernet 0 slash 0 ISIS metric. Uh, let's give the number, big number. Will it accept? See? It's not allowing. What does it say? It says uh, for a metric greater than 63, we have to set the metric style wide. It should be configured on L1, L2 router. So it needs to be also an L1, L2 router. Right now we have L1, L2 both, not just L1. Okay. So you understood why we need the metric style wide. Router ISI is metric style wide. I'm expecting neighbor back and the routes back. All right. Let's move on to room. These differences and all we spoke on the other day, right? Performing ISI is routing operations. Um, see, we have NSAP. An NSAP address identifies the system. Like you have no router ID in our OSPF. Here it is called as NSAP address. Identifies the system in the OSI network. An address represents an entire node, not just an interface. That is why I said it is like an outer ID. Are you with me? You understand? Okay. So there are various NSAP formats are used in various systems because of different protocol may use different representation of NSAP. Now, the NSAP address size is 20 bytes. I told you on the other day, the last two number will be zero, which means it is IP. And then these hexabits is system ID to identify the system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bytes over. And then this is enough for area ID, eight bit, eight one. If you want, you can go up to 20 bytes. Totally how many you go over, up to from here to here, seven seven bytes. Please try to understand the following pages will explain you this, but that, was conf that will be confusing you. That's why I'm writing right now here itself. The total byte of net ID or NSAP address is 20 bytes. In which this lower order seven bytes is mandate for system six byte and NSAP, one byte. For each router, the system ID should be unique within an area. You remember when I was configuring, I just gave one, two, three in this place. Are you with me? 
I was also telling when I was configuring, I was also telling that area ID can be from one by two. How many is left? From 20, if you subtract seven, how many is left? 30. So area ID can be between one to 13 bytes. All right, and then that number 40, nine is private. Even if you don't say this, it is okay. Including this 49, it is 20, sorry, 13 byte of area. Is this clear? Okay. So this is what you actually need to know, but here they may have a lot of other terminologies which are not really in use. See, NSAP is minimum eight byte. I just showed you minimum eight byte, how? N selector is zero, zero, that is one byte. System ID is six byte. And then for area, you need minimum one byte. So totally eight byte. Maximum? And debug. Area ID can be from 1 byte to 13 bytes. Clear, no? And the 49 means local administrator, like, like you know, private identification, but no one cares about private or public because we don't we don't use like that. They initially designed But not in use. Do you see this is an example? We already did a lab, so this should be easy for you. This is system ID 2222. Two, two, two. This is unique again 1111 And this is area. You no need to, if you are putting 49, then you need to put four numbers. Otherwise, you just put 04 and start. You can also simply configure this much enough. We saw no minimum eight byte. This is eight byte. This is area area one, no? So they put one here. This is area four, so they put four. Again, it's a hexadecimal. That's why you see C eight. It's not decimal. It is hexadecimal. But system ID should be unique within an area. See, if you want to, you can also take the MAC address of the interface or the router, and you can make it as a system ID. Or you can also take an IP address and put some zeros and make it a system ID. You understand what I'm saying? The system ID, instead of putting your own 111222, you can also take the MAC address of the interface and use it, or the IP address of the interface and use it. This last field should be always zero. The last two number. This one. That's called end selector. It's IP version. For IP version, it will be zero. End set. All right. Not uh, frame here. In OSPF, we have ABR, but we don't have any ABR. L2 is like a backbone area. L1 is a non-backbone router, equivalent to non-backbone. L1, L2 is like an ABR. Area address is used to route between areas. In L2, area address is used to route between areas. But system ID is used to route between the routers that are in same area. See, within same area, what is used to route the packet is a system ID. Between areas, it is the area ID that is used. But both system ID and area ID is where? It is in the same NSAP address.
that is what i uh, mentioned here l1 router means what the router within an area all right l1 router we will compare for destination address compare the area address l1 router will see if which area the packet needs to go and it will send the packet to the nearest l1 l2 you see here now topology in our topology um, i have only one l1 uh, only one border router l1 l2 router. how many i have only one what i'll do is i'll connect this one also to r5 so router one how many border routers it has got two border routers and which one it will use to go out depends on the cost here we'll go and increase one path cost so that you will see the one with the low cost path will be picked up if both are there then both will be used sorry uh, correct load bearer load sharing will happen okay we'll check that one in the lab but here right now we don't need that because we have l2 root also wait i would like to do that lab now you see right now in router 2 and router 1 we are learning l2 roots show ip route you can see l2 routes because you have two adjacency show is is neighbor you have two adjacency with each router l1 l2 with router 2 with router 3 also l1 l2 you understand but do we need both adjacency here no according to r1 r2 is not in different area according to r1 r3 is not in different area isn't it so i can suppress l2 what do you say let's go and see i'll go to router 1 globally i'll say please listen this is uh, going to be a little bit uh, challenging i'll say router iss metric metric not style um ISIS, ISIS, mm. metric, hmm, I'm, I'm trying to, level type, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm confusing level, uh, I just sensitive, no? uh for that is type is type is type i want to say level 1 only you understand this router will be only l1 because i don't have any other area connecting to r1 this is done where globally global mode whereas on r3 i need to do it on the interface mode why because the other interface is connecting to other area you understand i'll go to r3 so the command is also available in interface level isis is I say skip time. Here the command is circuit type. Circuit type level one. You understood, sir? Right. Let me also do it on all tools. 
the internet the internet ISIS circuit type. So the command is different. Let me show you one more time on R1. The command was different. It was simply IS type because we are doing under the router mode. When you do under the interface mode, it is circuit type. Now let us check in the router one. Show IS IS neighbor. You see, you have only L1. What is the advantage? The database will be smaller. Show ISIS neighbor. Sorry, show ISIS database. You see, you got only L1 database. Right? <coughs> and now, let us go to routing table and check. Show IS, IS route. Sorry, show IP route. You can see here a default route. See, we did not configure any stub. We did not configure stub. So still I can ping, which is router 10. Race route. We'll go to router 3 and then 4, 5, 6, and 10. Right, it's gone to router 10. Yep. So uh, we can see that still we can reach other area routes. Not only other area routes, you can even reach the other autonomous system if you have any redistributed routes using this default route. So this is a very big advantage. You see, in ISS, you can do this very easily. In OSPF to achieve this, you need to configure stub or summarization. Uh, not that easy like ISS. Okay, what is next? Let us go back. We made one of the routers L1 only, like we like they have done here. Like they have done here, L1 only, L1 only, L1 only. We have also done L1 only. But don't make this as L1 only because it needs to form neighbor with other area. Right? In the transit, this you cannot make it as L1 only problem. This can be L1. Right? So traffic will go, updates will go like this. All the routers in the path, not all paths, at least one path should have L2 to distribute routes. Right. I think uh, we will stop here today. Uh,